So let's talk about the architecture of GPUs. Now, before we begin, I have to issue a warning that the terminology of this whole course relates to NVIDIA devices. ATI uses a slightly different terminology. And in fact, throughout this course, I'm going to avoid any sort of comparisons between ATI and NVIDIA. Let me just say that there are cases when ATI cards have an advantage. For example, if you're thinking of doing something like Bitcoin mining. Anyways, the politically correct term for a GPU in CUDA terminology is streaming multiprocessor or SM. So the CUDA architecture is built around an array of these multi-threaded SMs and each SM, and there can be many on the card, contains several CUDA cores, also known as streaming processes or shader units. And the actual number of cores on an SM depends or is related to the uh, so-called compute capability of a device. And compute capability is a central theme of CUDA and we'll talk about it a bit later. Oh, and Obviously, in addition to processes, there's different memory types, all of which have their own different ways of initializing and accessing the memory, and more importantly, different performance characteristics. So here is a more graphical illustration of GPU architecture. Now let's start with the streaming multiprocessors. So here is one and here is another. And both of them sit on the same graphic device. And each of them have one or more streaming processors. Now a streaming multiprocessor has a bunch of memory registers that can be used by the processors and the number of registers that each SM has as well as the number of registers available to each thread is actually predicated by the compute capability of the device. Now let's add a few more CUDA cores, shall we? Now these cores can interact with the registers obviously as well as several different types of memory that's available. And first there is device memory, which is available to all streaming multiprocessors for reading and writing. It's kind of shared between them. And then there is shared memory, which is available to streaming multiprocessors individually. And it's also of a read-write variety. And then there are two special types of memory, constant memory and texture memory that the processors can read from. We have a whole separate module on the different memory types, but we'll get to grips with device and shared memory as we start writing actual code in the next module.